Racial inequalities have been around in America since its founding times, and it is unfortunate that in 2020, those same racial inequalities are so prevalent in our daily lives and within society. This summer, we saw an uproar standing up to those racial inequalities saying enough is enough and putting emphasis on the lives of brown and black bodies. Unfortunately, we saw the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, among a longer list of names, surfaced the media. And also, unfortunately, we saw a longer list of names that did not surface the media. We saw an uproar, not only in Madison, not only in the state of Wisconsin, and not only in our country. We saw a complete uproar around the world saying enough is enough and change needs to happen. I sat down with UW students to find out about their experiences and how they were feeling with everything going on around them. Their experiences and stories deserve to be told and deserve to be heard by the campus community. I live like, I'm about 20, 30 minutes from DC. Um, and so like, I'm more of like in a sub, in a suburban area. So within that own area, there wasn't a lot going on. I am in a majority black community still. So, um, but I, I don't think like people, people weren't really, you know, there wasn't a lot of protesting happening in my specific town. And so I think me and my friend were definitely trying to figure out what our role was in, you know, handling all of it and processing it, you know, because of course healing to me is like really important. So it's just first, like, am I good? Like, how do I feel? How are my friends feel? How do, you know, reaching out to all my black friends, like, how are y'all doing? Um, but then we did decide that we were going to go into DC and join the protest because we were like, this is, you know, this is, the fact that it got as huge as it did, we decided that like this is something that we wanted to be part of. Um, and so we did go into DC to protest. As soon as people were going outside, I um, I was going down as well. Um, a lot of my friends wanted to go down as well. So I, for the first few times, I were I sort of went by myself, um, sort of to get stay distant, also. Um, sort of document what was going on because I didn't know how how often it was going to happen. So I at least wanted to get um, document some of the stuff that was going on beforehand. Um, but it, it it was going it was it, it kept snowballing crazy. And DC was particular was was really was it was really bad um, at initially because because we're in the nation's capital, we're like my house is like maybe like 30, like a half an hour, um, a half an hour bus train ride to the White House. So we we were, there was a lot of people who were protesting right in front of the White House. So I was in Racine or like my parents' hometown or like my parents were at their house uh, the first couple of days of protest. Um, so I wasn't able to join the first couple of ones, but once I was here in Madison, um, I definitely went, I think I went to like five uh, protests, which although like, obviously I could have participated in more, um, I've been working a lot. So I think I tried to be physically there um, as much as I could, but I think we found a lot of different other ways to support these people, whether that's through donating or supporting local artists. I unfortunately was not able to um, just because I worked um, throughout the entire day and I also had my classes to attend to. Um, I did donate to various different organizations um, that were for these uh, protests. So there was a few organizations that basically were putting um, their their donations towards uh, jail funds or jail bonds for people that were wrongfully arrested during these riots for them to be released. Um, I donated to those organizations as well as those seeking justice for many of these individuals. You know, if you claim you're an ally, what are you doing? Like, are you educating yourself outside of this? Are you watching videos? Are you reading books? Because the, the resources are out there. You just got to put in the work and people don't want to do that these days. I know George Floyd was the catalyst for people to finally see what happens to Black people in America. But this stuff has been happening um, since forever. And um, the reading is out there. And 
it's not going to be the job of the people of color in our community in our in the UW community to to be the teachers. I think it's everyone else in the university's job to start doing the, the reading and the knowledge and gaining the knowledge themselves. Um, and I think that initiative can be the start to making things better for everyone on campus. Even if we're educated on what's happening, um, if we don't educate our youth, then I think we lose our, like our steam. I, I honestly, I, I feel like that comes from a place of ignorance. I feel like that comes from a place of, of non-acceptance. When people say all lives matters, I, I believe it's just a deterrence and it's just a claim to, it's just a claim to just to, to invalidate the, the struggles and the challenges that people of color face in the U.S. All lives matter comes from a point of trying to take attention from the inequalities that black people face in this nation and around the world. Um, so I think when I see these things, like I automatically know what type of people they are um, because even if you aren't the type to say or participate or say anything about protesting or participate in protesting, I think that you can acknowledge at the very least that racism is real and um, black lives need to be at the forefront of this movement. I think that the, the call for Black Lives Matter is, is a call for a change in these, these historically racist um, policies in, the, in our country. That, that, it's, it's, that it's time that it, that it got changed. Like it's, 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 it's ridiculous at this point that we're still talking about this in 2020. Um, and we're supposed to be like the greatest country in the world, yet we can't even take care of the people, um, the, the people in our own country. People who think like, there's like, we got so many issues and there's like COVID in one section and you know, racism and police brutality in the other section, like everything is intersectional. And so I think like, you know, like keyword, like everyone should look it up, like what is intersectionalism? Um, and I feel like understanding that, you know, we're in a pandemic that's proportionately, you know, um, affecting brown and black communities who are dying because of the healthcare system and and all these different things and then the police and like all of it's very interconnected. And I feel like as a society, if we started looking at stuff through a lens of, you know, this is happening to so and so because they have this, uh, you know, because they're, you know, a black woman and because they're a black woman, this is how society treats them. And because there's, you know, gender and race and, and all of these different things that are these different, you know, identities, I guess you could say that are kind of, you know, coming into each other, like, this is why the things are the, the way they are. And so I think that, you know, dealing with all of these, like having these conversations, it's all related. And I think people need to start seeing them through a lens of these are connected and why are they connected and what are the bigger things and how do we fix it? change needs to happen in one way or another. I'm sure there's people that share the same opinions as me. And the fact that they, if they do share those opinions, then that's, that says something. I want to say a huge thank you to all the students who participated in this video. Thank you so much for being able to share your stories and experiences. I know that tackling issues of this magnitude can oftentimes be difficult to do. So I want to extend a huge amount of gratitude I also want to acknowledge the fact that there are many more students and people out there who have stories and experiences that deserve to be told and deserve to be heard. I believe that we have an abundance of resources at our fingertips that we should all be utilizing to educate ourselves on the issues that brown and black communities are facing and dealing with on a daily basis. Um, and I want to say that all brown and black lives matter. They always have mattered and they will continue to matter every day.